For millions of years, the Earth has been perfectly good at absorbing carbon dioxide. Our forests, seas, and streams suck the gas up, acting as natural carbon sinks. That was until humans came along and tipped the scales. If we continue to burn fossil fuels at ever-rising rates, we could warm the planet by 7 to 9 degrees Fahrenheit by the end of the century, and the impacts of that would be catastrophic. There have been various attempts to capture this harmful CO2, but they've all come with significant compromise, until now. Five, four, three, two, one. Igniter on. Laser on. Hold, 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 hold. Oh. Hey, man. Lamp on. <laughs> I understand, lamp off. It works. Oh, Your baby. <laughs> The reason this team is so happy is because they've just completed the first successful ignition of the first CO2-powered turbine in the world's first carbon-neutral natural gas power plant. Their company is called Net Power. It'll be the first truly zero-emission power plant in the world. In a traditional gas power plant, the burning gas creates steam, which turns a power-generating turbine, creating a lot of excess CO2 in the process. Previous attempts to capture that CO2 have reduced efficiency and led to higher costs of production. Generally, it was thought that carbon capture on natural gas was not economic. So what we had to do was start with a blank sheet of paper. Enter this man, Rodney Allum. He developed the system now referred to as the Allum cycle. I set myself the objective of devising something which would remove 100% of the CO2 from the fossil fuel with no increase in the cost of electricity. Rodney actually did most of his work on what's called quadrille paper. He has a 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencil and a four function calculator and book tables to look up his data. When a complex computer model was created to check Rodney's calculations, Rodney's pretty much right. I selected CO2 as the fluid in the turbine rather than the steam or air which we used previously in steam systems or gas turbine systems. And it worked. <laughs> we, in effect, turned the problem into the solution. In Rodney's design, since the CO2 is used to spin the turbine and is part of an entirely closed loop, it never enters the atmosphere. It's captured by default. All right, do I understand you want a... And because the CO2 power system is just as efficient as traditional natural gas plants, the cost per kilowatt hour is the same. We've designed a power cycle that is cheaper and cleaner rather than more costly. Imagine when you have economics driving a solution instead of policy aspirations. Although the CO2 never enters the atmosphere, the alum cycle still generates a carbon byproduct which leaves us with the problem of what to do with all that carbon. Four thousand miles away, engineers in Iceland have an interesting take on how to keep the captured CO2 out of the atmosphere, shoving it directly into the ground. Carfix is an R&D project that we started uh, about 12 years ago with the objective of developing methods and technologies for capturing otherwise emitted CO2, injecting it into basaltic formations. We know that certain chemical processes are already happening in nature. For example, in vicinity of volcanoes, the CO2 dissolves into groundwater and forms new types of rock by interacting with basalt. And we thought, why not try and accelerate this process at an industrial scale? Very simply, CarbFix takes the captured carbon and mixes it with water, which basically creates seltzer. They then take the fizzy liquid and inject it deep into the earth where the carbon chemically bonds to the basalt rock. Instead of CO2 turning into rock in hundreds to thousands of years, this would happen within the time frame of a few years. 
here we have an example of a vein. This is then a small fracture where we would have dissolved part of the basalts and then we fill it up again with the carbonates. And that's where we see these pores filling up with calcites. If we uh, take all basalt available on Earth, theoretically, we could use it to permanently store much more than all CO2 that we would emit from burning all fossil fuel available globally. But CarbFix is still operating at a small scale, and it would take serious interest from industries and governments to grow to a size that would affect climate change worldwide. In the meantime, Net Power won't be burying its CO2 under the ground. They'll be selling it for cold, hard cash. Because for the first time we capture carbon dioxide at very inexpensive prices, we open up whole new industries for reuses and recycling CO2 that can be useful in building materials, chemicals, plastics, and a myriad of other applications. But one of the most common uses of industrial CO2 is actually extracting fossil fuels from the ground. In the US, you're actually injecting over 20 million tons a year of CO2 for enhanced oil recovery at the moment. You don't see it as undercutting the mission of reducing CO2? No, I think, I think if, you do, if you're sensible about the way that hydrocarbons are used and you have an integrated idea as to how you're gonna, how you're gonna utilize that hydrocarbon in a clean way. And that part is key. If net power's excess CO2 essentially leads to more oil being extracted, it's not a stretch to imagine it will mostly be used in traditional carbon spewing plants, not clean ones like net power. It very much appears that, you know, the, the age of fossil fuels is likely coming to a close. Some of these technologies for capturing and sequestering carbon might help provide sort of that bridge. It's gonna take a decade or two to, to really make that transition in our global energy economy. I'm very optimistic. All the technology's there, and we just need the will. And that's, that's really happening now. If we really want to succeed in, in fighting climate change, then we need to bring down the CO2 levels in the atmosphere. And there is no silver bullet, there is no one solution. We have to use all the methods available.